Hey everyone, Josh here again from Dust City Designs working on our $3 bear project where we're taking a small children's toy and turning it into a wireframe work of art. We just got all of our DXF files out of 123D Make and now we actually need to tell our CNC router how to cut them out, where to cut them out, what depths. So we're going to be using CamBam, not necessarily a free software, but you do get 40 free uses out of it. We actually have a license for it at the shop, really enjoy working with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go File, Open and our we're going to come in here to our file folder and find all of our dxf files we've got these 12 in here go ahead and click open and there they are so you can see they've all got numbers on them and codes and everything we've got a little piece down here that we're gonna delete wasn't quite what we uh needed and i don't think we're gonna quite cut that out of plywood not really needed for what we're doing so we're gonna get rid of that and then just kind of check, see if there's anything else that needs to be deleted. These little parts in here aren't really that important to us. Go ahead and click delete. And then we're going to delete this. And we're going to delete that one. So if you remember our last program, we actually told um, the software that our board was actually only 95 inches by 47 inches. This is going to give us a little bit of breathing room in this, as you'll see here in a sec. We're going to go ahead and select everything. We actually have to join all these pieces together. Um, they're actually a bunch of segmented pieces, and the computer can't really understand where to send the router head when we're cutting these out. So by joining them, we kind of set all that up. Now we got to go in here. we got to define our stock. Uh, we're actually going to put the actual size in here, um, which is 48 by 96. And we're also going to put the material thickness in there, which we're going to put as 0.5. Then we're going down to the bottom. We're going to tell it our post processor is the default. And we're going to give it a tool diameter of 0.245. And we are using an end mill. So we're using a quarter inch router bit. I found these router bits are actually a little bit thinner than a quarter inch uh, when you get your micrometer out, but not a big deal. Now you can see on our yellow line here, we actually have that full board on there. And see how we got a little bit of room to breathe around there. So we're going to kind of center everything on there. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to select all the stuff that we want cut out. It's going to be all these little pieces here. That's it. This little piece is a little bit tight in here, so we're actually going to move it down into this area. Oop. Actually, you can grab those numbers too with it. The this program doesn't really read these numbers, but it bothers me when they're outside of it. So we're just going to go ahead and grab everything, kind of move it down a little bit. Um, if you bump up your uh, tool diameter when you're in 1, 2, 3D Make, it'll actually p space these a little bit farther apart. So, and move this side. There's plenty of room on this board, so there's no reason to have them really that close together anyways. So, it looks pretty good. Yeah, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start selecting all these pieces. All these pieces, we're going to do an outside profile cut, meaning the line that's there. We want the, our uh, router bit to go just on the outside of it and kind of follow those lines around. So now we've got all those selected. We're up here, we're going to click on Profile Cut. A uh, little menu kind of drops down over here. We're going to tell our clearance plane that we want it at a quarter of an inch. Um, our depth increment on this one, we're going to go for 0.16. I generally run anywhere between about 0.16. Um, 0.1 and 0.25, depending on the material. We're going to turn up our uh, cut rate to 100 uh, inches per second. And here, we're going to put some holding tabs in here. These are little tabs where the machine will actually pick up the router bit. When it's getting towards the bottom of the cut, and leave a little piece of wood connecting our cutout pieces to the original board. If you don't do this, your boards are actually going to move, and you can actually damage your router head. You can damage your piece. So they're really good to have in there. So now we're going to tell it to generate the tool paths. Um, there's a bunch more settings in here that we don't really have to mess with. Messing with, you know, conventional versus climb cuts, um, tool offsets, everything like that. Uh, we're just doing a pretty basic cut. So now that we're in here, what we're going to do is we're going to go, all these little red boxes are actually where they're going to put those little, um, the little bridge pieces in. So we're just trying to get them out of these slots in here. Um, some people like to leave them in. I don't like to leave them in there because they're kind of a pain to trim later. And if you don't completely trim them off with how tight the tolerances are on this piece, they're really going to cause you some headaches later. So there's a bunch. We're actually going to go back. We're going to decrease the number on here. Um, generally holding tabs, I like to do at least three on there. Uh, I find that kind of holds it in place. Um, um, plus, from also being on the table, it's really not going to move anywhere either. You just need a little bit of support in there. 
And these are all pieces that we're going to have to go back later and trim off. So the less trimming we have to do later, especially with 60 plus pieces, the better. There we go. We already did that. Yeah, now we should be able to move these kind of around. Like I said, trying to get those out of the slots, it's just too much of a pain to try and go back later and uh, and trim those out of those slots right there. Move all those around until they get good. Those. And get everything kind of right where we like it. I like to kind of just spread them around equally throughout the piece just to kind of hold everything in place. Like I said, we don't need a ton of them on there. There's not really a lot of torque put on the piece towards the end of these cuts. Just making sure it doesn't move on us at all. We're also kind of double checking all these pieces to make sure that um, sometimes if a line isn't joined properly, it'll cause us some headaches and it'll actually try to cut on the inside of a line. So now that we've moved all those, we're gonna tell it to regenerate the tool paths. Now that all those um, Bridges are in different places, it needs to regenerate those. So those are all regenerated now. And now we need to tell it to produce the G code. Um, the G code is what we're going to put into our CNC machine. It's going to tell it how to run. So we're going to create a new folder so that these are all kind of in one place. So now we're going to save it in here. We have to use the file extension .ngc on the end of these, so we just change that to a uh, work with our EMC2 program. So that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Uh, our, our next video, we're actually going to be cutting everything out of the CNC machine and getting ready to put it all together. Thanks for watching. Bye.